So we're going to finish up Chapter 2 with this video lecture. So turn to the page that starts with graphing. A graph is a visual representation of data. The independent variable is the one that a scientist will change. It is plotted on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis. The dependent variable is the variable that changes in response to the independent variable, and it is plotted on the y-axis. When we interpret a graph, to interpolate means to just look at the plotted point and then find where a point is located. So if I was to ask you what is the temperature at an elevation of 300 meters? Go ahead. And it is 18 degrees Celsius. And if I were to ask you what is the elevation If 16 degrees Celsius, and we would say 600 meters. So interpolation is just reading a graph. Extrapolation is extending a line beyond the plotted points in order to estimate. So here, we see the data line ends at minus 123 degrees Celsius and 300 milliliters. When we extend the line with the dashed line, we are extrapolating the data. And we see here that at zero volume, the temperature is minus 273 degrees Celsius. We're going to discuss the significance of that later. And finally, interpreting ozone data from chapter one. So here is a graph. There's two time spans, 15 years and 31 years. And we see that the whole the ozone hole is clearly shown here where there is a significant drop in the total amount of ozone in the stratosphere. Following is a video on graphing and then that will take care of the notes for today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph data by hand. We're going to be making a scatter plot of some data. Graphing by hand is somewhat tedious, especially when you're setting up your axes, but it's important when you're learning how to graph, it's probably the best place to start. And so let's say I give you the following data. Let's say I do a lab where I vary the amount of fertilizer that I'm giving plants, and then I measure how high those plants grow. And so the independent variable in this case is going to be the fertilizer, and the dependent variable is going to be the growth of the plants. And so you could pause the video if you want to right now. You could try to make a graph of this data, and then you could come back and look at the important parts of, of a graph and how I set it up. Or you could just watch me, and then when you're done, try a graph of your own. And so the first thing you want to do is figure out what kind of a, a graph you're going to use. In this case, I'm going to use a scatter plot because I'm looking at the correlation between two number sets. Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I set up my axes in the right way. Since I'm varying the amount of fertilizer, I want that to be on the x-axis, and I want plant growth to be on the y-axis. The thing you change will be here, and the thing that you measure will be here. Notice that I've also put what I'm measuring and then the units that I measure it in. So fertilizer is going to be measured in grams, and I put that in parentheses. Just likewise, uh, plant growth is going to be on the y-axis, and then I put that measuring in centimeters. Next thing I want to include is a good title. And so I could look at the relation of fertilizer to plant growth. 
if I knew more about this lab, like the type of plant or the time period when it was done, I would include that in my title as well. Make sure that you can look at the title and you should be able to label the axes just based on that. Um, you shouldn't have the title that's, for example, just plant growth. Um, you want to have as much information in that title as you can. Next thing I want to do is I want to put numbers and I want to put tick marks or major grid lines on, on both the X and the Y axis. This is hard to do and so let's say you're doing a test and you're given this amount of graph paper you want to make sure that you use all of the graph paper um, and that's going to give us a better graph and it's going to allow us to look at patterns in the data and so this is sometimes difficult first thing I want to do is count the number of squares and so I count the total number of squares and it's 21 squares and then I look at the range and so you can see here that my fertilizer values go from 2 to 12 and so I have a spread of 10 grams that I want to make sure I'm able to graph now students have a tendency to want to put the number zero here but since zero is not in my data set I don't want to include zero on my graph I want to use all of the graph paper and so a quick way to do this if I divide the number of grams by the total number of squares that tells me basically how many grams per square and so I could start here this being 2 this being 2.47 and then just move across like that but you can see it's going to be really unwieldy. It's going to be a bunch of decimal values. It would end exactly at 12, but it's not going to look that nice. And so since I'm less than 0.5, I could simply round up to 0.5. And so I could label it across the bottom as 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and 4. And so I've labeled all of the whole numbers across the bottom. I didn't have to put all of those there, but I at least have to have two or three numbers so that you can figure out what the scale is going to be. Now let's go try and do the y-axis, or plant growth. I count 15 squares here on my graph paper, and I've got a range of 80 centimeters of plant growth. So likewise, I could divide that 80 centimeters by the number of squares, and that's going to give me 5.33 centimeters per square. So if I were to round down to 5, I wouldn't have enough room to put all of my data here on the side. And so what I can do is I can round up and I can say that maybe every one of these grid lines is going to be six centimeters. And now I put my label, my axes on here. I want to make sure that I can go all the way from 18 up to 98. So each of these is then going to be six centimeters. And so I can show all of my data. So every two is going to be 12. And so you want to make sure that it's a linear labeling of the X and the Y axis. Next thing I want to do is I want to graph my data. Well, what's my first data point? fertilizer of 12 so I'm going to go, go all the way over here to 12 and then I'm going to have plant growth of 98 well if this is 92 that means this is 98 so my first data point should be right there and so now I'm going to put all the other data points from my graph so I'm going to fill those in with dots now you can see that there were some times when I had um, same amount of fertilizer but two different types of plant growth and that's fine one thing I don't want to do right now if I'm doing a scatter plot is I never want to connect these lines because those are different plants and so that wouldn't make any sense. I'm almost done though. What's the last thing that I'm missing right here on my graph is going to be a line of fit. And so a line of fit is going to be a line that represents the average of my data. It doesn't always have to be a straight line. You can see in this case that as I increase the amount of fertilizer it starts to stabilize up here at the end. And so that's going to be my line of fit. We don't want to extend it past my, my last data point. Um, we don't really know what might happen out here. It would only be just a guess. And so that's kind of hand graphic.